then that's the solid yellow. The stripes are the renovations for what we have now. Um, and the office or the uh, the parking goes along with the, where it says office renovation. Kind of divide up a little bit to give us a little more on the back side for the another entrance that's on that side of the building for basically electric department. The uh, if it goes through, the electric department will be on the the lower part. The new part will basically be the gas water sewer kind of a, not completely set. It's in the same building, but they'll be at like two different wings. Same hallway, nothing divided with doors. It's just a, you walk in the building, you take a right and go to gas water sewer, you take a left to go to the electric. Yeah, that, that uh, stripe part, that'd be the electricals in? That's the, yeah, basically yes. Yeah. And that, that that's most, the of that's, most of that's to be renovated? Uh, I wouldn't say, yeah. All of it's there. We're going to save a couple of rooms, like our conference room, the training room. I think it stays the same. They're not going to remodel the bathrooms, that kind of thing. It's, they're going to, the office space up front is going to be renovated for uh, SCADA, some training, some for the electric side. Yeah. And then the gas will have theirs on the, on the lower end. On the, on the building, on the renovation, on the phase, Phase three on the building, it, you're looking at roughly a million dollars is what they're looking at for, for that. And what we wanted to do was kind of divide this up. Uh, the, this part of the renovation would be done by a contractor. That's something that we can't do in-house. That needs to be done by a contractor that that's what they do for a living. The other renovations, when you go back to the phase two, like um, right there, it's showing the concrete pad. We're going to move some stuff around um, to where we have better access to our transformers. Um, right now, we just have everything piled on top of one another. Um, also, if you go back to the buildings, the, uh, that, those two sheds, we put an 80 by 150 shed up about, I think it's been five, six years ago, and we're already in our room for it. That building was designed to where you could put another one right directly next to it and join the two with a full concrete pad underneath. Now, you do that, you're taking away some of the material that's underneath our main building now, putting out there, which is going to open up space for, we, have, we, need a, we need a place where we can work on transformers. Like if Bill has a transformer or a breaker, we have to basically do it outside in the, in the weather and has to be done on days where you can't do that. We have no place to put it inside. So this is going to alleviate that. We're going to put a door on the back side uh, where it says the 18-foot door wire, with wire storage is there now. That will be moved to the new building. He'll have an area to work on equipment. Um, also, truck bay doors uh, has been an ongoing issue for for years. Uh, when it gets down to 20 degrees, uh, anything basically below 30, you have to leave the truck running for two hours. The hydraulics on them, they just get froze up and they just won't function. They just, you just have to wait and it's really hard on the trucks. Um, so in the, all the renovations that we're talking about with the truck bay and the mezzanine in the warehouse and the, the two buildings, and the paving and everything, you're looking at just a little over... 870. Yeah, 800, 870,000 for you. Now, there will not be a contractor on that. That will be done. Somebody will be kind of over that. We don't need, we don't need engineers. We don't need you know, architects. That's just basic structure. And the same guy that did the, the, the building that we originally moved into is a new core building. The buildings that you see that we've added on since are new core also. Um, about eight, nine years ago when we built that eight bay garage, uh, I found a contractor who's out of Anderson County that he's a new core distributor. And we buy the building, the reason we get it so cheap, we buy the building, he just has it shipped to us. We pay new core. So there's no middleman. We cut all that out. And he comes down for a X amount of dollars and he puts all that up. So we don't have to, I mean, it's a turnkey. Uh, mezzanine, 
if you guys have been in the warehouse, I know it's it's uh, it's really cramped. When when we moved up there 24 years ago, I think what are we going to do with all this room? Well, right now we've got we've got uh, three pallet racks that are almost 30 feet tall, 25 feet tall that we're setting stuff up higher because we just run out of room on the inside. We're storing stuff in the 80 by 150 shed now that needs to be indoors. Uh, we've got some sensitive stuff for substations, but we just have no place to put it. Questions on anything? That new addition, how many how many square feet was that going to be? <laughs> was it 3,000? I heard that before. Yes. Yeah, the, the solid yellow portion is about 3,000 additional additional square feet with, um, with repurposing of various rooms uh, on the inside. If you look at it as one long extended triangle, uh, the top end would be a program for gas, water, and sewer, and the bottom end, uh, just above the words office renovation. That would be program for the electric department with a separate a separate entrance and um, an additional parking uh, for, for electric where, where those words office renovation are, are written. Yeah, where the office renovation or where the add-on is going to be is taking away eight of our parking spaces. So that's another reason with the parking going hand in hand. This all kind of goes together. It's a you're taking away from one, you're adding one spot, you're taking somebody away, so you're, this is the best option that we could come up with that's going to take care. We have equipment that's sitting outside that does not need to be sitting outside. Uh, pretty high dollar equipment. We have some of it under shed, some of it is kind of under shed, but it's, you know, you have hard rain and it gets wet. Uh, that's one of the issues we're having right now. Yeah. And then, like I said, the cold has always been an issue. What was your total on that project? 2.2 million. 2.2. That's everything. Yeah. Uh, how confident are we in our current utilization of capacity? I know you said we're running out of room, but... I mean, I've, I've seen people put warehouses up and turn a crate, a whole warehouse full of crates the wrong way and utilize it up at half capacity. And somebody got a logistics expert to look at it close and found they had half the warehouse still sitting there empty. And I'm not saying we've got that. My question is, with this kind of money we're talking about and new addition, we really need to take a hard, hard look at utilization of our capacities, I think. We, uh kind of drawn it out on paper I have on where the vehicles need to go. Uh, one thing on the new building that we have there, I think it's uh, 35 by 32 by 125. There's going to be 10, 12 foot doors there for equipment. We put eight foot, or we put uh, 10 foot doors in on the eight bay and they're not big enough. So we're going to make all these where you can get anything we have, we'll go in it. Uh, when you move the equipment around, these buildings are going to take care of our equipment issue. Uh, the mezzanine is, I mean, that's that's something that we really uh, we we really need. Uh, we've I've just got stuff stacked, and if, if you guys want to come out sometime, I'll show you what what I'm talking about. Um, we have a lot of stuff that we don't use regular, but we have to have it. You know, substation stuff. We've got a, a bunch of that. Uh, we've got stuff sitting outside. Like I said, it, it doesn't need to be out there. I mean, we've got $25,000 breakers that they don't need to be in the weather. We've got some of them covered up with tarps right now because we have no place to put them. They're just sitting out in the parking lot. How much of a consignment program do we have? We have none. Okay. Everything that's on our lot is owned by us. Consignment's a big deal in the industry nowadays with people. Warehouse for me, I mean, KUB is a basically a consignment type, yeah. type thing. That's why it's all there. We started this exercise back in February, and uh, with the intent to have your board meeting at the operations center in the training room in April. Well, then COVID 19 hit, and just 
all our plan plans went out the window. Um, so we pushed pause and we had, we were working with an architect, David Collins, uh, same architectural firm that works on Neyland Stadium and, and they had done a continuation of the 1995-1996 plan uh, which called for a, a separate building in, 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 the, in the field over there in the, in the northwest corner uh, of, the, of the square you're looking at. And the, the price for that was just, it, it, in our estimation, cost prohibitive. And, uh, and we, we went back to the drawing board and, um, and uh, Jim McKee and, and, and Barry Mack and others on our team really um, took up the challenge to see what we could do uh, if, if we served as our own general contractor and pull out bits and pieces uh, of this. And uh, we ended up pulling out the vast majority of it other than the building extension that you saw uh, we would still like to eventually uh, have, have a general contractor architect you know assist us with that uh, however we we are very confident and, and you know we, we, we've, we've talked about it a while and I think we have proof of concept that, that we can that we can handle the remaining items ourselves um, we, we've cut the, the cost of this project um, uh, in half and, uh, and we're just impressed with our efforts and the chairman and I were talking about this last week of you know, you know our, of course our overall presentation plans uh, were, were disrupted by COVID but the question became do we mention this now or later and we thought we'd go ahead and pinch, mention it now because it's budget season it's in the back of your mind and what we'd like to do is just migrate this into our five-year CIP and with the roof being the priority, uh, but then uh, subheadings within the within the CIP uh, based on these slides and what you've been presented with this afternoon. Any questions? I'm certainly not opposed to any modifications needed, but I certainly want us to have a 95 plus foot confidence level that we're utilizing the space we currently have, whether it be office or warehouse. Because I know how easy it is to try stuff up, pile up a room, do this and do that. I mean, I just, I just think we ought to take a good, hard look at logistics real hard before we invest more money to things that we might not be utilizing well. Again, office, same. That, that's my take on it right yeah. now. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with you. Yeah. Plus, I'd like to know square yeah. footage we're talking about here, because to me, one of the key elements of square footage cost is, I mean, when you're building, when you're paving, when you're graveling, you want to know what your cost of square footage is. So I, I, I feel like we need to know that. Mm -hmm. what was calculator, what's square footage on that bill? 80 oh, You don't need to now, Jim. I'm just saying some more. But, but okay, but we, we checked in. We checked into that. They they estimated that just for an example, mm -hmm. the 80 by 150 building that's going to be added on to the one we did a few years back. We had a hundred and uh, I think we had a hundred and eighty thousand dollars in cost to do that. Concrete done, finished building. When they estimated originally with the architect, they estimated that at five hundred thousand dollars is what they estimated to do that building. Mm -hmm. By us doing our part, subbing out contract for concrete building and everything, we can get in that building for two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That's three hundred thousand dollars cheaper than what they had estimated it to be. The other building, the 32 by 125, same way. I mean, there's just so much that you can do on your own. That you don't, you know, you're not paying, I hope there's no contractors in here, but you don't yeah. have to pay that middleman. And then the man that's helping the middleman. And, you know, next thing you know, you've got $100,000 in fees that you could have put someplace else. Yeah. So that's how we wound up with the other shed was because of that. I mean, we could do it. I mean, and the eight bay, you know, I would, when that was the first project, it was told, um, oh, we can't, you can't do that. And, and I said, I made a statement. You give me $125,000, we'll build it. I went over $3,000, $128,000. That's with electric doors, heat, lighting, that's done. That's, that's a turnkey, and we're done with it. And when you tell people that are in that business of what you've got in it, they just like, how did you do that? Well, you just... 
do it. You just take care of it. You're, you know, you, you get prices and you check around. And just like on the roof situation, uh, the, the roof repair, you know, 175000 they had 350000 estimate. And, and I got some quotes that were pretty high. I mean, but you checked around. This company is doing that. It's out of Georgia. They gave me a list of 20 uh, buildings that they have done, and they're all known. They're all like Dow Chemical, and you know there were several places in Georgia that I mean I can't even think of the names now, but they have a list of their their prominent business. So I mean we're we're getting a good 20-year warranty, which we have a 24-year roof now, and it's it's on its last leg. I mean we've got tarp set up in the to keep off our record stores. Remember the dungeon? Yeah. That's up at the operation center now. I mean our upstairs is it's full so the mezzanine is going to alleviate some of that plus it's going to get some of the stuff that's in the outside and it'll be inside what type of roof is that it's metal all metal and it's got what the problem is it had that well there was a couple things when they put the insulation in originally they used just bad insulation that did not have that nylon fiber in it and it's solid we've got sheets that are eight foot square that are just fell just there's just a, a metal you can see the tin we've replaced the screws on it twice because they just they leak you know the seals go out from under them, and it's just it's just it's it's life it's it's life so anything yeah, can you get with your people at the op center and rehash this a little bit and see if, if we actually need what we're asking for? You know, uh, an example would be, uh, do we need 3,000 square feet additional office space? Mm. You know, that'd be a good, good place to start. You know, and then <clears throat> see what we've got, like Jim's showing. Jim knows what's setting where. And just see that we're going to be able to accomplish what this plan right here proposes to us if we put this up. If you can do that, I'd appreciate it. We will. We will um, fine tune it and bring it back right. piece Thank by piece. You. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate okay. your work on this. Thank you, Jim. Before we move on, has anybody else got anything they'd like to say about this? Before we. This, I mean, I'm sure we're going to have further information and, and, you know, move right along. It's a lot of good information. And as we get older, I know that, you know, that's been there a long time. So, you know, in order to make money, you got to spend a little money. Okay. And we'll, we'll bring every every piece of this back to this board. Uh, appreciate it. <clears throat> If you don't have a good roof, it won't last. That's right. Uh, well, you know, we, right now, yeah, right now we know if we don't do nothing, we got to put a roof up. Yeah, there. that's what I was doing. That's, that's <laughs> evident. we got to get the five-gallon yeah. buckets out from there. Uh, Let's put our records up there. I don't on. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is the uh, salary schedule. Yes, um, what I'd like to do is uh, address the key changes to the, to the salary schedule. This would be, you know, in the form of a, an amendment uh, to the salary schedule that you would uh, consider uh, later this month. And what I'd like to do is invite uh, Jason Brown forward. Uh, there's two positions in particular we want to talk about. One is... It's not a new position, it's changing a position. Uh, the assistant environmental engineer is currently filled by Ed Adame. He has graduated with a master's degree from the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. And we want to graduate him uh, to a full environmental engineer position and sync his pay up with uh, an electric engineer uh, in terms of the, the overall salary schedule. Um, next is a is a new position that I'd like uh, Mr. Brown to address holistically uh, in terms of our organizational chart. Brand new position. Hey, gentlemen, I'm going to pass out a copy of a word chart as well as the job description for these uh, positions that Mr. Ross has discussed. Thank 
Good argument, sir. discussed, uh, uh, talked about the, uh, uh, the environmental engineer position. We'll start with that one. Uh, again, a key accomplishment by um, Ed. Ed certainly currently serves as the assistant civil engineer, or engineer, environmental engineer, in the gas, water, and sewer with the completion of his master's degree and the efforts of us to, to work more efficient and effective like it's important for us to promote him into that position and possibly streamline some of these uh, direct reports for the director of the gas, water, and sewer. And you, you look through his uh, his job description and you see some of the duties and responsibilities that uh, he will be taking on uh, in his new role. <coughs> Is that kind of like taking a little of the load off of John? Yes, sir, it is. That's exactly what we're trying to do. If you look at that org chart, one, two, three, four, five, six, John has about seven direct reports. What we would like to do by creating this position is really to give John maybe three direct reports. Being our PE, our environmental engineer, and the supervisor of field operations, and then take those other positions and rotate them underneath um, those three key leaders. Still all filters back to John. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is the potential savings to us as far as uh, maybe not putting as much into contractors down the road by doing this move? Is this going to save us any money there? I do not have that number. If it's, if it's a direct impact, I think what we're going to see is we're going to be able to have uh, this environmental engineer have direct oversight of all of our contracts here. If this water plant expansion is coming up, we're going to have direct oversight <coughs> and maybe not need for a offsite project manager. Can I give a specific instance? Yes. Our sodium hypochlorite feed system at the wastewater plant is on the CIP. Was, uh, we had some numbers come back on it that it was going to cost over $900,000. The engineering team we have in place now revisited that project. Larry Jones, it's $750,000? Yeah, we... So. Our cost estimate came back high. It came back more than you had budgeted in the CIP that we presented to you. And, you know, now that we have a couple of engineers on staff, we were able to value engineer that back down uh, to the figure that you had approved. That's the benefit of this structure. Good thing. That's that, that's kind of what we're looking for. Right. Is, you yeah. know, if we're as we move forward, you know, as, with the engineers on board with us, uh, being able to go ahead and you know those guys right. being able to step up and put money back into it. So yes, sir. I think the roadmap is clear for the direction that the board wants to go in, and we're we're just trying to get their pieces lined up in order to um, accomplish this trip. Good to get there. <laughs> so, uh, it's pretty sad when you don't utilize what you have. Yes, sir. And like Bart bringing up, you know, that's that's where we'd like to go. And, we, and we've been we have invested a lot of time and money in our assistant environmental engineer. Let's um let's get a return on our investment. So come back up to the old chart in just a minute. Yes, sir. You made a statement, I think, earlier, maybe alleviate some direct reports from John. Yes, sir. So where would the reports report to where then? Okay. Uh, the yes, sir. Seven. So if you, uh, if you would take this uh, environmental engineer position, mm -hmm. uh, we've had some discussion with, with, with John, and uh, it also is reflected in his job description that the chief operators, he would be over the water plants, water and wastewater plant. So, oh, is it? Be able to vote that. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So does that, so you, you, you could take your, your assistant environmental engineer, just draw a line from your chief operator to the water treatment plant and your wastewater plant. They would then report to um, your environmental engineer. Where it says operator. Yes, sir. Operator. Yes, sir. It's chief operator Correct. and chief, yes. But both operators. Both operators and, and those beneath that would fall under your engineer. Is that a dotted line or straight? That would be a straight line. We'd actually move it. I, I want to show you your existing chart or chart. This is how it looks now. <coughs> uh, and with this, you know, at, at, I can, we can do a dotted line just for projection, what it no, would look like. The dotted okay. line is a dotted line in my or, or chart is that they would still have some report to John as well, not a limit straight line back to your own. No, I think we have. Uh, our thoughts on this would that's fine. I mean, yeah, that's we, run, yeah. We, 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 we really want we want a straight line. Really meant. Yeah, okay. We're, yep. So that that's one thing that would be under your engineer. Uh, okay. Of course, your supervisor of your field operations that probably would not change. And then we'd probably look at moving your engineering assistant and your uh, wastewater inspector, backflow preventer, moving those to uh, probably under your PE. Professional engineer. Yes, sir. <coughs> yeah. And it, this kind of, kind of goes hand in hand with we're talking about our, our uh, succession planning too. So this is, uh, I think, really. So then that would leave with. That just leave Brian with a super, the field operations. Yes, sir. A direct lander well, drone. Chief. Yeah. That would just that would Brian just, and and this is an environmental engineer. Right? You'd have your PE on the uh, far left, oh, team, yeah, I'm sorry. far left. Yeah. You'd have your PE. You'd have your environmental engineer, and then you have a field supervisor. Yeah, those would be John's three direct reports. That take quite a load off, John. Yes, sir. Yes, he's got a lot of knowledge to, to oh, share, right. and we think this is. That might get different. It would. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. I like. It. Any more questions on this one? Just been communicated any to anybody? John, what, what's John think? I mean, it's been communicated to the folks, anybody on the chart. This is with the this is talking about it. John, John is the author of this plan. Okay. Good job. Yeah, we'll buy it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Anybody underneath? Not what? yet. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, nope, because if we if we took it down too low, it'd get back to you all, and then you'd say, why why why, why don't we know? Well, that's the point. I don't know how far <laughs> down we communicated. Yeah. Know it. Yeah. No, sir. We know where the hotlines are. <laughs> yeah. There you go. We got to be wise about it. I understand that. Don't disrupt the apple cart. You don't have a bad name. That's right. Yeah. So. Okay. So any other questions on the environmental engineer piece of it? Yeah, I think you have a salary schedule in your packet. Did we compare the salary with any other environmental engineers in the district's areas? We, what we're just comparing in house. We're, 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 we've used the TVA model as well as when we were um, recruiting for our professional engineer, which is a, a PE professional engineer, uh, and that's our scale. And so we bumped it down from from the um, PE scale. Okay. So. And I think the plan, uh, will, you know, Ty, Ty used the word, a peek behind the curtain moving forward is, you know, John leaves, John retires, um, we've got a PE who's ready to step into that role, and at the same time, Ed's currently working on his PE license, so we can see a transition. That's our most logical session plan we've yes, talked sir. about for years. We're, we're trying to get there, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make Gene smile. <laughs> I can do that anyway. <laughs> Uh, other things are important. Right? <coughs> Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason. We appreciate that. Now, uh, so that's the environmental. So yeah, you want to yeah, talk about yeah. the other position? Yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. So since we're on the org chart, let's just continue to look at the org chart, please. As, as, as our, our structure, if you, you look at our gas water and sewer and, and, and the director of electric operations, you can see there is a buffer between the, the hourly and then there's a there's a, some type of a supervisor and then there's a the engineer mm -hmm. that is not reflected in our electric department I'll give you a minute to look over 
Yeah. What we are asking to create, which is which will mirror your gas water and sewer, as a supervisor of field operations position. And again, you have a copy of the job description, and those are some of the duties and responsibilities that uh, uh, this this position will, will will have oversight on. This is a true added position where the other one's just a transfer basically. Yes, sir, just one eliminate the assistant position and, and create the environmental engineer position. And this one is a new position, yes. Because you know if you go from on the gas warning, so you've got the chief operator of the water treatment plant, and then he, he kind of acts as a buffer. And then you have the chief operator for the wastewater treatment plant. Well there's kind of a, a line or a buffer. And uh, I think the, uh, there, there's a need to have this position in the electric department to kind of filter and handle day-to-day -day operations out in the field. And Director Watkins articulated this need to me uh, earlier this year. Um, again, we, we did get kind of sidetracked with COVID. Um, but then others came to me, um, two and three people, and, you know, when multiple people come to you and, and tell you this could be uh, a, a plus for the organization that moves from the back of your mind to the front of your mind. And, and when it was all said and done, I had heard from more uh, than a dozen people uh, in the electric department, uh, including all of our foremen, who like this idea. So all this listing of essential duties and responsibilities one through ten. How many of those do Bill? Bill does all that now? No, sir. You, you currently have a working foreman doing doing those items. Okay. This is one of the things that we really identified was the efficiency of our organization. If you think of it as, as like like juggling balls, <coughs> we do ourselves. And then sometimes you've got other partners around and you toss them the ball and they have a responsibility for that. And these were some of the things that were the job responsibilities. Um, for instance, it might be uh, reviewing the job that the tree trimmers are doing. These were the bar balls that I would toss back and forth between uh, different, some of our different foremen. I really needed a more consistent, constant, single point approach rather than, well, who's going to go out and check the tree trimming this week? Uh, other things were uh, when I came into this position, we uh, one of the first things that, that we identified, uh, Travis was motivated with this, was to engage TVPPA and their excellent line training program for all our guys coming up. Well, this still takes constant monitoring. And so as, as I would be involved in some of this and the board would be involved in scheduling their guys to be able to take this, uh, this was another ball that we, we bounced back and forth. And so some of the things that we have done and have uh, continued to improve on our crew become balls that we juggle back and forth. And so they see this as a way to be able to do the thing more efficiently and have, uh, uh, have a concentrated in-field watch of these things, whether even the, the type of equipment that we've got, all of the investment in the underground holders, cable uh, trailers, all these other things that have bells and whistles that we identified between the four of them. What needed to be, what we needed to have to improve our efficiency. And so this was the focus of this. How can we as an organization run the most of these as efficiently as possible? And that was where, where really the idea of this position was born. I assume you'll have to take us through the bid system. Yes, sir, we will. <coughs> So out of nine, does that take anything off of you for your safety? No, no, sir, it does not. So um, they're required monthly training. So he kind of works the schedules with their, their monthly safety training. Just to yes, sir. Now, now, it wouldn't be on the bid system, would it? We don't. 
Well, what are we, we post the, you'll post, post the yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I always that call that that be it. Yeah. yeah. I just didn't yeah. remember. Because yeah. we had that coming up. I mean, <laughs> position will be properly advertised. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. <clears throat> I come I just, from an organization where that's what they call it. I'm sorry. I just, I just want to make sure we got our terminology. Yeah, make sure we're both, we're all on the same page now. All you guys, yell for this? I, I, I think it's a good program to have uh, someone to go between your men and, and me. You know, it would leave a lot of pressure for him. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he would have to deal with some of those issues that he has to and deal with. Right. And I think we've seen the benefits with this position in the gas water sewer department. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. So. I mean, for Bill, he's saying he thinks it's yeah, it's going to make what we're doing a whole lot more productive. Yeah. It will. So streamline more of what we're doing. So right, it makes we'll, sense. We'll see if we all feel that way two weeks from now. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Huh? It, it'll be thought of. <laughs> a lot of money. Yeah. A lot of money. Yeah. Up next uh, item on the agenda is our safety report, and I see there were no injuries for May. That is correct, sir. Thank you. Natural gas rate, uh, hadn't got it yet? No, sir. Okay. All right, that takes us over to other. And Manager Ross, you have anything else for us? No, sir. Um, just thank you for your time and attention during this budget process. Appreciate your feedback. Um, we do have the homework assignment from uh, Vice Mayor Dixon, and we'll, we'll jump right on that. Carter, you have anything, of course? No, sir. Mr. Tim. I'm good. Jay? Good. Mark? I'm good. Uh, one item before we leave is, as y'all know, the <coughs> Our attorney, Fry, has been working on that contract for quite some time, off and on. And it is complete, and you do have a copy of it before you, as well as uh, by email. So, does anybody need to talk about anything tonight concerning this contract, or do y'all just want to wait until we have a regular meeting and go with it? I have a question since we're on that topic. Is uh, the changes that were submitted and made, are they final as far as the rebuttal to those changes, whether they were stated as requested or not? You may have to use your microphone more. So I'm sorry. You, you didn't hear me? I, I couldn't catch all that. Okay. You want me to say it again? Yes, please. The changes that were submitted that you revised but may not have revised in full but still put forth a change, does that make this final document final, though? This, this is the final proposed draft. If there are additional changes that need to be incorporated, <coughs> I would like the board to, to, to discuss those. Okay, so there's not a question, uh, my question was not whether there's future changes, but the changes that were submitted, if they were not in, applied to this final document now, that means that they were not accepted, so the accepted state has now been put out. That's right. Okay, so I need to know. Thank you. Good deal. Anybody else? Any more questions? There's Concern, one, concerns or comments? There's one I got. Uh, I've, I've tried to look over most of this, <clears throat> and I know in the past we haven't had uh, our utility manager or city manager has never failed under the guidelines of having an opportunity to go to civil service if need to be. Uh, is that something we might want to look at? Well, to be added I, to this. I don't have contract. I don't have any any comments or concerns on. Okay. I just want to pull it out. Not if. Okay. Any more concerns or comments? Only thing I think our charter would have to be changed. 
had that, the language had to be changed. Probably, oh, it would. It, it would be. Mm -hmm. Which is no problem, we just had to just tie it you know, the, the, key, the key component of civil service protection is, you know, due process and, and notice. And without going back to change the charter, I think we can adequately address that with the words which are on this page, which are, and I'm summarizing here, you know, if there's an issue or uh, a discrepancy or a deficiency on my part, I, I just like the, the notice and the ability to address it, you know, with you. And and I think I think the document captures that. <clears throat> Anybody else? All right, we'll look at it again in two weeks. Uh, this meeting is adjourned.